Well, oh, good morning. It's hard not to have gifts and giving on your mind at the moment with Christmas just around the corner. Did you know there's only 42 sleeps to go? (laughs) I bet the kids knew that. I love that Christy organises the gifts for Casper and I love that our church participates in that. The thought of that young person receiving a Christmas present, they don't know who it's from, it might be the only one they get but it must give them some joy knowing that there's someone out there that's cared enough to spend some money and go shopping for them. Um, You know, or maybe they don't really think about where the gifts came from. Maybe it just makes the day feel a bit normal, a bit more like Christmas, and that's okay too. This year we're having a big family Christmas, and I'm calling it that not because we have a huge family, but because it's been quite a few years since we've all come together on Christmas Day. Last year, my son was a close contact to someone with COVID and he found out on Christmas morning, so it didn't turn out as planned. (laughs) Hopefully this year, there won't be any hiccups. And some of Ian's, my husband's family, is making the trip from Brisbane. So there's gonna be quite a few of us and I am really excited about it. I've started cleaning already. Actually, I wish that was a joke, but it's not. (laughs) And it's our tradition to buy presents. We know that Christmas isn't all about the gift giving. Actually, we spend most of the day eating. But we all know the important significance of the day and gift giving, it's, it's only a small part of it. But today, I want to talk about another gift. I feel the ultimate gift that we can give others And it's the gift of giving our time to talk to them about Jesus. And I wanted to put something together about this because it's something that I'm not good at. I think most of the people I know, they know that I'm a Christian. I'm happy to tell them when they ask me, what are you doing on the weekend? Tell them I'm I'm going to church. But talking to others about Jesus is a whole different story. So this message, it may be more for me than some of you, but I hope you get something out of it too. And I'd just like to pray before I go any further. Dear Heavenly Father, glorifying you is such a big part of our service to you and making you known to others should be a big part of our lives. We know that you love us unconditionally, whether we do what you ask of us or not, but we also know that using our gifts to serve you blesses us and pleases you, and we want to please you. You have given us life, hope, joy, and a future, and we want our family, friends, acquaintances, and even strangers that cross our paths to know those things too. Lord, please reveal to us today that we do have the ability to tell others of you. Convince us that through you, we can confidently tell others what you in our lives means to us and give us the courage to step out in faith to do your will. Amen. I know that God calls us to tell others about Jesus, but the truth is it's something that I don't feel confident doing. What if I don't say the right thing? What if I mess up and I was their only shot at eternity and the life God wanted for them? But I had, I'm going to call it an aha moment recently while I was doing some Bible study and reading, and I want to share what I've learned. And it starts with understanding the disciples and who they were. They were ordinary men. There was nothing extraordinary about them. They had their faults and shortcomings. None of them were scholars or religious teachers. They didn't have any exceptional skills. They were ordinary men, just like you and I. But they were chosen by Jesus to go out and build the kingdom. The thing that set them apart were they were men of faith, they were willing and they were available. Matthew 10, 5 to 7 says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Just prior to these uh, verses, Jesus calls his 12 disciples 
and he gives them power over unclean spirits, to heal sicknesses and disease. He gives them spiritual gifts. These disciples aren't qualified, they haven't had any formal training, but they were spending their days with Jesus. They were doing life with him. They'd heard him teach and they'd seen the miracles he'd performed. But they were unqualified, just like most of us. They were unqualified, but God still called them to serve him in this way. And because he called them, he was going to prepare them. If he calls us, he will prepare us. God won't call us to do anything without giving us the tools or the gifts uh, to be able to do the task. And in this ver- these verses, Jesus is preparing his disciples to build the kingdom. At this point, he's only telling them to focus on the Jews, not the Gentiles or the Samaritans. And that would have been a strange thing for them to hear because back in the day, they, taught that if, they were taught that if you were Jewish, if you were a descendant of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, that you were automatically going to heaven. So this would not have seemed an easy task for the disciples. But they were to go to the Jew first because the Old Testament covenant, the promise of the kingdom, was being between God and Israel. And then the Gentile would be blessed through the Jewish people. We would be grafted in later. So Jesus is preparing the disciples for when he's not here. He's preparing these unqualified people to build the kingdom of heaven. He says to them, actually he commands them, go to the lost sheep and tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. When he's talking about sheep, we know that he's referring to the heirs of God and fellow heirs with Jesus that will inherit the kingdom. Anyone who has confessed that Jesus came to earth to die for their sins and has accepted him as their Lord and Saviour. We were adopted into God's family by our faith. We are his sheep. And just to define sheep a little bit more, and this is where I had that light bulb moment, Matthew 25, verse 31 to 33 says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats he will sh- uh, on, his- on the left. Jesus comes to join all the nations together after his second coming and he comes to separate the sheep from the goats. He is separating those that will join him in the kingdom from those that won't. The sheep on his right will join him and the goats on his left won't. The sheep, the believers, enter the kingdom and the goats, the unbelievers, will enter into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So you can see that sheep and goats have very different meanings. Jesus says to his disciples to go look for the lost sheep. Lost, as we know, means those who don't yet believe in the gospel or are unsaved. When Jesus says to his disciples, go look for the the lost, he doesn't refer to the lost as goats. He refers to them as lost sheep. The goats are the ones that will go to the lake of fire, not the lost sheep. Sheep are God's children. Jesus didn't tell the disciples to go turn the goats into sheep. We can't turn goats into sheep. We need to find lost sheep. And it's God's will for all of his lost sheep to be found. Now, we don't have the power to bring faith to anyone. Jesus is the one who saves. Hebrews 12.2 says that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. We can't take any credit for bringing anyone to faith. We can tell someone about the gospel and God uses us to do that, but we can't make that person agree with what we are saying. But when they do agree, when someone comes to Jesus by something you've said or done, that's when you found a lost sheep. 
God does the work behind the scenes. He just uses us to act on his behalf. God prepares the heart to receive the message that you may have delivered and the lost sheep is found. The goat doesn't become the sheep. So when you think about it that way, our job to do God's will and tell someone about Christ, it isn't as hard as we thought. God has done everything needed in the heart of that person before we even approach them to help them understand the gospel. And we aren't responsible for the outcome. Their salvation isn't in our hands. We are just pointing them to Christ. We are only the messenger. We're not responsible for the results. That's between them and God. And knowing that has made me feel a whole lot more comfortable and confident about telling someone else about Jesus. It's discouraging thinking that we need to turn goats into sheep. But if all we need to do is to find the lost sheep that have, have already been prepared by God to hear our message, it feels so much easier. I've always felt discouraged thinking that I have to have a whole speech prepared to convince them. But we don't have to convince them. We shouldn't really need to convince them. They should be open to hearing about our faith in Jesus and all that he's done for us and all that we can, uh, he can do for them. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't try again if someone isn't open to listening to, on, to you on a particular day. But if the person isn't interested or the conversation is causing tension, then maybe it isn't a lost sheep you're speaking to. Maybe they haven't been prepared to hear his message. Or maybe it's just not God's timing. And we don't need to go out of our way to find these lost sheep. Jesus said, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, as you go, you don't need to go out of your way, you don't need to leave the area, and you don't need to leave the country unless God has put that on your heart. He gives us the opportunities, he directs our ways and people into our paths. He does the work, we just show up and follow. I've heard two separate stories recently where God has put a believer and a non-believer on the same path. The non-believer or the lost sheep needed help and the Christian was put in the position to be able to help. They were put in a position to show Jesus love. And in both situa situations, after receiving the help, the non-believer was open to prayer. And I'm not saying that's going to happen all the time, but, but all we need to do is be willing and make ourselves available, just like those other ordinary men that Jesus chose, the disciples. When I think about my own faith and salvation journey, it's not a complicated story. It started with someone asking me to their church. I had been attending a different church, but on this particular night, I accepted Jesus into my life. It wasn't my plan for that to happen, but I can clearly see now that it was God's. The Holy Spirit definitely led me to go forward that night and make that public commitment. And when I think about it, it wasn't what was preached that made me make that commitment. I think if it was, I'd remember what was said. But my heart had already, be, had already been prepared for whatever I was going to hear. But not long after that night, I gradually let the world take over again. Even though I still prayed and I knew God was listening, I wasn't really walking with him. But I knew I would make that commitment again. I knew I would find my, myself in church again. And it had been on my mind just before that same person asked me to church again, this church. And I can see looking back that God was working in my life. He had put church on my, my mind before I was asked to go. And not just church, the need for something more, a new and more joyful life. This time is different though. This time I'm really getting to know Jesus and I can't see him. Can't see him not in my life. And yes, that desire has come from God, but being part of this church has also made that difference. 
Alan spoke last week about us as Jesus' sheep. I was a little bit worried when he started his message. I thought he'd taken mine. I thought I was going to have to do a whole rewrite. But anyway, he spoke, went in a different direction, and he spoke about us one anothering one another. And I've definitely felt that here. So important. And telling others about Jesus, doing God's will, it shouldn't be burdensome. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30, Come to me, all you who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Serving him in this way or in any way, it shouldn't feel like a heavy burden. I had to remind myself of that while I was preparing this message. He has done all the work for us. We are just acting as his representatives to show others all that he is. We are just making ourselves available. He will teach us and our learning will be easy and light. Serving him will be like rest. It shouldn't be an extra burden to weigh us down. It's something we should be incorporating into our everyday life. Jesus commanded his disciples to go out and look for lost sheep. Think about how you can make everything you do each day about serving Jesus. Show God's love to everyone you interact with and go looking for those lost sheep. God has already prepared them. They are just waiting for you to show them his love. That's my challenge to myself. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to look at all who cross our paths differently. They may be lost sheep, just waiting for someone to tell them about your goodness. Help us with the words, Lord, and remind us that they don't need to be complicated. The way to someone's heart isn't through complex knowledge of you, but through your simple message of salvation. You came, you love unconditionally, you lived the perfect life because we couldn't. You laid your life down and died a death you didn't deserve. You took our sins to the cross and you will come again to rule. But Lord, also give us the wisdom to know when to stop talking and to leave the rest of you to you for you are the one who saves. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to work with you to help build the kingdom. Remind us that this is a blessing to us because it brings us closer to you. We love you and are grateful for all that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen.